Hello, this is Jimmy Mitchell, and we are back with another episode of the Libertarian Century Podcast. Let's get right into it. First, we have a Fortarian State Republican strive to remove top jurors from entering the existence of racial bias, the party of free speech and anti government overreach, reporting government overreach, limit free speech, checks out from Slate.com, and that's Strive Town 20. And I agree that, you know, it's a bit of a government overreach, but I definitely would say that I wouldn't, um, I don't really believe in, you know, uh, all, uh, um, all the, um, uh, you know, you know, I would say the legal system is inherently authoritarian. So the thing is, is that, you know, I think we just got to have everyone, you know, have their own legal system. And, and if people don't like whatever people say, that's on them, you know, I, I don't think we should have an official state sponsored legal system because that would, that leads to too much, um, authoritarianism as we see today. Then we have... Social media as ideological masturbation. I posted that and I said, In 2003, the Broadway musical Avenue Q famously sang about how the internet is for porn, even though that is still very much true. I would argue that to an extent, we've seen the internet lead to the pornification of ideology through social media. When you watch porn, you seek engagement through sexual stimuli and jerk off yourself off into a climax. Similarly, the same is often true of today's political climate on social media. People seek out for political stimuli to jerk themselves off until, to, until they climax. Like with porn, you, see, you seem to see a lot of troops that come up again and again, like such as, look how stupid e- slash evil the out group is, and look how virtuous I am, and look what buzzwords I can use. It's really interesting to notice. Thoughts? And then I added, um... I think, I don't know if I had anything else there, but, you know, it, you know, ever I'm kind of guilty as well, but, you know, in John 8, 7, let he who's your father's sin cast the first stone. So, you know, I think it's kind of something that everyone's kind of guilty of these days, if you ask me. Then we have how politicians north of Richmond got so rich from common sense soapbox on YouTube, and I posted that. And I think, you know, that's, it's very much, politics is very much, was always much, very much a grifter. I think we're finally starting, starting to catch on to that. You know, people say, oh, well, Donald Trump's a grifter. Well, they're all grifters, frank, fr- fr- uh, frankly. And the thing is, is that they all want to just, you know, just, just, just enrich themselves above all else. And you definitely see that in politics. That's why I think we just gotta get rid of this political, just get rid of politics. I say, just let to have their own politics and, you know, just get rid of the system that we have currently, because it's an inher- I think it's an inherently corrupt system where people will do will will, will seek to insert themselves for like insider trading and all that. And yeah, it's not good. I would say. Then we have Happy Labor Day. Let's talk about unions from Baton Fertin. And That's a post from Unraveling Comics Comics.substack.com. and. I personally would say, I think if you want to form a union, you should be able to form a union, but the thing, because I think that's free association, but I think, you know, if the, I think we need to hold into check union authoritarianism as well, because I believe, you know, cor- corporate authoritarianism, union, if, if anything is collectivized, it can inherently be authoritarian, and I think the union is an exception to that uh, rule, I would say. Then we have Supreme Court to decide whether to kick Trump off ballot. The perfect case for a very imperfect SCOTUS from Newsweek.com by Muad Dib. And I said, I can see it being 6 free for keeping Trump off. The Bush Trump justices would want him off because they know he is the weakest Republican candidate, or at the very least, most divisive. Well, the Obama Biden justices would want the opposite. You know, I think a lot of people feel like it's going to go the other way, but I definitely get to see it going that way as well. Then we have, the state is the real monopoly, and the libertarians are the trustbusters from LPPA, and I posted that, and I very much would agree with that. The thing is that the state is an inherent monopoly, and they, and, um, the state seeks to, has, 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 has a lot of access to mon- things that monopolies don't even have, like they have the monopoly on force. And, you know, that's a big one. And they have the monopoly on um, pretty much what currency people use. And I think that's important to note because we shouldn't be having the state make decisions and have all this control. 
because uh, because you know when people uh, uh, giving anyone too much control isn't good. I would say so. That's my thoughts there. Then we have how long until the self-proclaimed free speech absolutist bans fact checking? And that's across. Well, that's right. Clorox Scarf Ross was from the white people Twitter subreddit. Fifty Shades of White. They, they're openly confused about why all the misinformation conspiracy theories supposed to come from the right. This is better than par parody, and that's a uh, yeah. I personally think you know. Um, let's see. Talk on. Let's what are you calling? You're calling fact checkers MSM slash labeling wing propaganda. My pronoun version. So I think I think I, I think you know a lot of fact checkers are you know they they are kind of left wing propaganda. I would say the thing is the MSM has its narratives and. You know, they can determine what the facts are. You know, you, you can't, you know, we, we should let everyone inter else, to, we should let every individual person determine what the facts are for themselves. And if, you know, they come to a different conclusion, I mean, that should be fine because people should be able to think for themselves. You know, that that's something that increasingly people don't want. They don't want people thinking for themselves. They want people thinking what they think. And I don't think that's the, the, the right the right option. I think people need to think for themselves. If they come to a different conclusion or one that you view as frankly crazy, you know, they should be able to. You know, as long as they're not hurting anyone else, they should make whatever conclusions they want to, I would say. Then we have Nationalist Fractures Child School for Disrespecting the Flag from WishTV.com and uh yeah I don't think that's good I think you know people shouldn't be um uh you know um hurt for uh, any reason, you know, I think, I think physical violence, you know, is you consider in that violation, but the thing is, you know, you shouldn't be, um, uh, beating people up like that, you know, even, even if it's probably just, you know, he probably wasn't in the mentally good place anyway, the guy who did it, uh, this Kurt Brockway fella, but I think, um, uh, you know, if, if he has some der derangement, um, uh, you know, that's, that's important to note as well. Then we have, would you rather abolish the right to work, the NRLRA and the NRLB, or keep them all? By Ruin My Circle, where can he post, and that's a poll, and, um, I said, let's see what the poll is. First we have 11 votes for wash all of them, and 4 for keep all of them, and I said... Uh, would you like to abolish the libertarian position? Still, almost always be yes, especially in regards to government agencies and pronouns. And and remember my circle jerk said replied, "Never words, not really something that's collected here." Words part, and I said exactly, you know. But it looks like they are kind of supporting it, so that's good, I guess. So I think we just gotta get rid of all this, all this authoritarianism in the government, and hopefully we can do that sooner rather than later. Then we have your choice for the future of labor relations by Patan 13. And that is a poll. And let's see, it's never a poll. And let's see, so the options were amend the NRLA to increase the power of an opportunity for unions. So that's 17 votes. The nine votes passed federal law that prevents right to work laws, forced from forcing to open shops to avoid dot dot dot. Eight, repeal the NRA and abolish the NRLB and make right to work a federal law. Then that's eight votes. Then one vote each for repeal the NRLA and abolish the NRLB and legislative replacement laws. One amend the NRLB to reduce the power of any opportunity for unions, and one keeps the status quo. I think you know I've all I vote for the first one, the the eight vote one repeal the NRA and abolish the NRLB. We have to we have to have as many as few laws as possible. Uh, we need to support uh, small business, and you know with the, the NRLA and NRLB, you know they kind of make it harder for small businesses to do their thing, you know, and that's why we need to support um, small government and small. So just generally, you gotta support small stuff over big stuff because the smaller a collective is, you know, the the least damaging it is. I would say. Would you abolish? Then we have never pull. Would you abolish all laws or institute tyranny? From Travel Slash Superman, there is no middle ground. You must choose between one of these two options. Don't even start with false dichotomy bullshit. So we have 
Uh, 14 votes for abolish all laws and 5 votes for institute tyranny. I would agree with that. I voted for abolish all laws. I, I think, you know, the law is essentially can be whatever the government says it is. You know, I think if the government says, you know, you gotta jump up and down 50 times a day and they want to enforce that, they can. So, you know, I think... I think people should have their own laws, and you know, if they see, think someone's violating the law, they have ever, they, and they want to use force, they should be able to. But don't be surprised if people consider that a NAT violation as well. Then we have. I am sure that endorsing an organization that supports a fascist apartheid state, Israel, and supports male genital mutilation is not anti-hate. And that's a uh, post from Marianne Silver 1. And it's a tweet from Jerry Paul Paulus, the governor of Colorado. I stand at ADL, stand at ADL, hashtag stand at ADL against hate and bigotry. And I said... Um, I said... I'm more against ADL for how they're trying to do censorship by proxy, but I will accept allies against them for any reason. You know, it's right, everyone just agrees that the official DNC narrative is already labeled a fascist, uh, fascist Nazi or white supremacist anyway, so, you know, you really don't have too much to lose. You know, the ADL is increasingly trying to say, oh, we want to control the narrative. Yeah, uh... And then that's increasingly, that's pretty much the, the DNC narrative. You know, the ADL, much like the SPCL, ACLU, and all those are, are pretty much, um, you know, um, just, just uh, extensions of the Democratic Party. So we need we need to support free speech, and that's not what the ADL wants right now. They want to stay what they want. They want more censorship. And, you know, even if it's not free to agree with, you know, free speech is for speech that we despise, you know, no one... No one, no one supports free speech for you know. Oh, you know, you know we got. If you don't support speech for for for, for that's frankly hateful and vulgar, hateful, vulgar and sickening, then you don't support free speech at all. I would say. And we have Tuttle Twins, season two, episode seven, Mermaid Tales and Planning Fails went on the dangers of central planning and featuring F. A. Hayek, and I posted that, and I said definitely one communist writer should wa probably watch. You know, everyone. Increasingly, is pushing for social planning on the left, you know, or central planning, and that's not something I think. I think I think we need people to make decisions for themselves because people people know what themselves best over anyone else, and that's why we shouldn't have the, the central planning. People make other people making decisions for you. I would say that's why I'm very anti uh, government. I would say because the government makes decisions for you, and that's not the the, the right answer. I think I think we need people to have, make their own decisions and. Um, and not that of the state. Then we have air conditioning is rooted in white supremacy from Libs of TikTok. And I posted that. And I said, um, what will it be tomorrow? Apples? You know, um... You know, it's every every day they find something new to label white supremacy. You know, that's why it doesn't really mean anything anymore. Because now, because you know, everything's white supremacy these days. So that's why, you know, people just run just trying to stretch it as far as possible. And that's why no one takes words like white supremacy, fascism, or Nazism seriously anymore. You know, if you, you know, it's like the boy who cried wolf. When those do, when those do, if those ever do start to emerge, then people are not going to take them seriously because, you know, you're just labeling everything, like, as them. So that's why, you know, I don't think this is good in the long run, I would say. Then we have Republicans just can't stop calling for civil war from the Hill.com from Dr. Gonzo. And I said... What about when de our Democrats retweet stuff like riots are the language of the unheard and go on about completely restructuring our society? As usual, it only matters when the outgroup does it. Then we have, for so long, ADL's primary attack targets were critics of the Israeli government, usually they're not only on the left, Watching the liberal left now have the ADL on both tactics and goals because censoring their adversaries from the internet is the goal of both is just gross. From Glenn Greenwald on Twitter, I posted that and I said, I would call them more the DNC left than the liberal left. Funny how the ADL doesn't go after anti-Semitic groups when they laugh the narrative. They could never get away with 
this tweet today, and I linked to a tweet of them saying, oh, this is from 2019, it's like, oh, the Ukraine returns to be called the Azov Battalion, it's ties to Nazis and white supremacists, you know, you couldn't get there at that because Ukraine's good, and even though, because we're arming the Azov Battalion, because, because, um, because Ukraine good, and that's all people, the narrative people care about these days, I would say. Then we have TIL that Sinn Féin took first place in the May 2022 Northern Ireland elections, and then the main unionist party pretty much died to refuse to validate the results, and they have been unable to form an executive ever since from Michael Moss on Twitter, and I posted that, and I said, probably where the USA is heading, the more dysfunctional government, the better. The Uniparty party only likes democracy when it can be used as a mandate for their agendas. Otherwise, they'll find excuse to undermine it. So that's why I think, you know, you know, you, you saw that in 2020 and 2016 with the, you know, 2016, they went Russia, the Democrats went Russia, 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 Trump is illegitimate. And then 2020, they're like, oh, you can't do that. You can't just say elections are illegitimate. So now I think you might see the thing reverse in 2024, but it depends what, what, what the outcome is, you know, so... It will definitely reverse one day, I would say, or because you know I think if essentially democracy is just me- you making decisions for other- people making other decisions for you, and that's not how things should be. I would say so. That's why I think you know I think we're slowly gonna start to turn away from democracy. It looks like, and that's I think probably might be better in the long run. I would say, but that's you know that's just my personal feelings I- I- on the issue. Then we have. This isn't the dunk you think it is. I defended Kavanaugh. You apparently were outraged by evidence free accusations then, but are embracing him now to attack Obama. I'm consistent from Brad Palumbo, and that was his reply uh, to someone on the Obama, the guy on Obama, uh, Tucker Carlson had on about how Obama was having the gay orgy fall the cocaine. And I said, People only believe and care about stuff that fits their narrative. It's the cardinal rule of social media, you know. If, you, if, if, this was, if, if Tucker Carlson had the same guy that said the same about Trump, I bet you all the left would be all over it. But you know, it's 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 about Obama, so you know it's oh it's it's a false conspiracy theory. You know, believe whatever you want. If you don't believe that Obama is a cannibalistic pedophile who drinks the blood of newborn babies, I think you should be able to. But you know, you know, as long as you're not violating violating that and, and forcing that belief down other people's throats, then I think you should be able to believe that. But you know, a lot of people might find that crazy. But you know, believe whatever you want. I would say. Then we have the end of Airbnb New York. Local Law 18 goes into force, potentially wiping out thousands of Airbnbs from Carl Spackler 42069. That's across from the stocks subreddit. And I definitely would agree that's overly authoritarian. And that's something that, you know, we need to support small business like Airbnb and not making it harder for them to operate as New York is doing there. So that's my thoughts there. And I think we're going to wrap it up there. And I'll see you guys next episode. Bye.